Hey guys, so welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So you might know that with a controller such as the Presonus Atom SQ here, you can control Studio One natively. So you just connect this to your computer and you're ready to go. And you can use all of the knobs and buttons on the unit directly with Studio One. But if you have another MIDI keyboard or controller from another vendor, then it's just as easy to connect that to Studio One. And there you can assign all of the available buttons to navigate and to assign functions like play, stop, record, rewind, and things of that nature. I'm going to walk you through every step of the way. If you're wondering how to set up your MIDI controllers with Studio One, then this is the video for you. And hopefully it's going to help you out. So in the first step, we need to connect the keyboard or controller via USB or via MIDI to a computer. Much more common these days are the USB connectors that you see here. But if you have one of these old school MIDI five pin connectors, then I'd recommend you to get one of these MIDI to USB cables that I'm showing you here. If you have a Presonus USB interface, such as the Studio C series, those often also come with a MIDI input on the back. So you could also hook up your MIDI controller and keyboard this way, and you wouldn't need another cable. Next, you launch Studio One, and then you go to the Studio One menu up here, and then click on Preferences. Then you go to External Devices, and you click here where it says Add. Now, if you add a new MIDI keyboard, then you want to add a new keyboard here from the device list. And otherwise, if it's more like a MIDI controller without keys, then you want to add it as a new control surface. The only difference is that a new keyboard would show up in your input list on an instrument track and the control surface wouldn't because you're most likely not playing any notes of your virtual instruments on that. In my case, I'm hooking up a keyboard, so I'm just selecting new keyboard from the add device list here. Now I can type the manufacturer and device name. Of course, that's completely optional. This is just for your own personal reference so that you can still identify this keyboard in your list. I'm just gonna type Roland in this case, A300. That's what I'm currently connecting. And now the only other thing you need to do is click on receive from and select the port wherever your USB keyboard is connected to your computer. And that's pretty much all you have to do. You can still filter things like aftertouch, program change, pitch bend, and controllers. When you tick these boxes, then your controller isn't sending any of this info to Studio One. Usually you want to have as much information as possible, so don't worry about it. Uh, you can also select to split channels. Now this is more for these big workstation MIDI keyboards. You probably don't have to mess with that. The only other option you might want to consider is default instrument input. When that is engaged, then on every new virtual instrument that you're adding in your song project, this keyboard and this keyboard only will be assigned as the MIDI input. This makes sense if you're in a big studio and all of the other keyboards are a bit out of reach and everything that you want to record, you play from that central controller, then it makes sense perhaps to have it as the default instrument input. And the only other option you might want to look at is enable MPE, but that only makes sense if you have an MPE enabled controller such as the Rode Seaboard. Okay, that's all we need to do here. We click OK. And now we're ready to assign our transport controls to control things like start, stop, record, and so forth from the available buttons. Open up a new Studio One song. You can do that by just clicking new here on the start page. I've already opened one here. And now you just click on this second drop down arrow that you see at the top left. If you're not seeing that, then it's possible that your Studio One window isn't fully expanded. See, if I'm decreasing the size, it can disappear. So make sure it's maximized. If you're still not seeing it, then you can always go to the mixer console and click on this MIDI icon here to show the external devices. And then you can access them from here. It's the same thing. I'm just going to click here and now select my brand new MIDI keyboard. In my case, it's the A300. Now I just click on MIDI Learn and I go ahead and tap all of the available buttons that I want to assign on my MIDI keyboard. Now notice that these buttons that I've just added have actually been reported as encoders to Studio One, but we can of course very simply change that. You just tick this with a right click 
and then you change it to whichever kind of control this is. It might be a slider or fader, it might be a button, and here you can actually differentiate between an on-off button and a press release button. Now an on-off button is something like the record button, right, where you engage record and that stays on until you toggle it off again. Press release button is more like a momentary button, think like a drum pad or something like that that you only hit once and that should then trigger something, a momentary trigger, so to say. In most cases for transport controls such as play, record, rewind, fast forward, you most likely want to have the on off button behavior. So I just tick that and I also tick that on all the other ones that I've added. Now notice that media learn is still on because otherwise I'm not able to do this. So make sure you just not touch media learn until you're done. And now all that's left to do is just right click this control and hit assign command. And now I can just search things like toggle start. That would be to stop and start my Studio One project from the same button on my MIDI keyboard. And I can also assign things like record and really any other keyboard shortcut that's available in the program. Macros can also be triggered from these MIDI buttons as well. Once you're done, you just disengage MIDI Learn again, you save the song, and now this is your MIDI configuration for all of your songs going forward. With that, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you out when trying to assign controls on your keyboard or controller in Studio One. And thank you for watching.